Hello, YouTube. The F FOMC and Jerome Powell absolutely moved the market today. We're up by over 2% on the NASDAQ, and we're up by over 1% on the S&P 500. So the question now is, how high can we go with this W pattern intact and with us also breaching the 50 weekly and closing above it? There are a lot of signs this, this rally might have more steam to it. If we look here to our monthly chart, which has been birthed today, we're also starting to invalidate our head and shoulders pattern. Please note, this will not actually be confirmed until we close out February or there is a whole month of trading. So it is early, but we have early evidence that this is currently a bull pivot because we're above last month's high at 29826. We're over the 50 daily. We are now poking over our daily chart as well. We have two consecutive daily closes over our 200 DMA. The dollar is also dumping. We note that the dollar is actually broken out of its downtrend and is currently pointing down. It is back below 101.4, or it is now at a, uh, not a 52-week low, but pretty close all the way back to May. One more thing to look at here is the VIX. It got stomped. It is now down uh, to a 52-week low. So there is a lot for us to go through today. If you wouldn't mind, um, just watching all the way till the end, if you want to know, exactly what I want to see in terms of how high we could go from here. We're going to go through all the data. Today's video is going to be a little bit longer, but stay tuned all the way till the end if you want to see those uh, those updates. If we could smash your thumbs up too, that would be greatly appreciated, but let's jump straight in. So worrying about the Fed is so last year. Here's why. We went from praying to <laughs> gotcha. Um, that's what it seems like today where, um, when, when we look here, earnings matter more than the earnings matter more than the market now. And there's, uh, there's confidence about us inflation. Don't forget about Japan and China. So even with stinky earnings, meta is pumping after hours. It is currently up by 18%. It's now announced a $40 billion buyback. Uh, meta is probably pretty close to, uh, I don't know, like it's not growing anymore. I think it's the first quarter where, um, they haven't actually grown, but they announced a $40 billion buyback. So a roughly, I don't know, like $400 billion company went up by 20% or $100 billion in value created after the close. Not even into, uh, not even into Jerome Powell, right? $100 billion, $100 billion big boys. Oh my goodness. That's what the stake here. So we went from praying to like, oh my God, sweet, sweet relief. Also, What's so interesting now is that the S&P is up by more than 7% on the year, which would normally take us all the way into November. So we've been very, very, very rewarded if we've been bullish so far this year on a one-month time frame. And the S&P currently up by 7.42%, and the NASDAQ currently up by about uh, 13%. We're already where we would normally be into November. So we've had 10 months worth of gains and it's only into uh, the second month. Oh my goodness, why? Well, we're still heavily shorted. Uh, we're heavily shorted by more than 200,000 contracts, which means they've lost billions of dollars so far this year. The shorts have not been willing to cover. And as we look here to uh, uh, January, 2020, that's the start of the squeeze. So these guys are really getting burned. They're losing billions. We went into extreme greed briefly too. We're now down here to 73. So it's not that we can't go higher. It's just that this reading is starting to get what? Extreme. It's starting, it's starting to turn into an extreme reading. What? That bear field rally is what's causing it here. So much so that Michael Burry went from deleting posts to deleting his account. This account no longer exists. Man, <laughs> did he fold? Did he quit? Did he fold? And did he give up? So what actually happened today? Let's understand what moved the tape. And then uh, we'll look at some charts at the end of the video, as I alluded to before. So here's what's changed in the Fed statement. And again, worrying about the Fed is so last year. So what changed? Well, not all that lot, not a whole lot. We look here to the areas that are scratched out and you can pause the slide, pause the video if you want to read each individual item or you can just Google it. Uh, but not a lot's changed, which means, okay, well, not a lot's changed. So why did the market go higher? Well, um, let's, read what, what, let's read and see what Jerome actually said here. I'm just pulling through a couple of headlines. Maybe you'll have more tomorrow, but for now, let's look at them. Would be very premature to declare victory on inflation. Okay. Um, don't see signs of a wage price spiral. But once you see it, it's too late. Okay. Um, overall, my own view is that we will not have sustainable return to 2% inflation without a better balance in labor market. My own view is that we are not going to have a sustainable return to 2% in core X housing sector without increased labor slack. That's really important. 
Um, we have a different forecast from the markets. Okay, so he doesn't really care. The the, the market's going higher. He got at he got, he had he had asked um, he he was asked questions outright. Are you happy with what's happening in the stock market? And he said, uh, financial conditions of ease, but blah, blah, blah. Maybe not more than before. We blew through our rel relative resistance. Uh, if we look here to our daily chart, um, we're continuing our cup with the handle and now we're popping. So pop flag, pop flag, pop flag, pop. Even if we flag out now, we have time to get to this uptrend before we decide if we're going to continue at this angle of ascent or if we need to come back down and test our lower uptrend. As of right now, we don't have to. Cup, handle, and now it's actually passing because it's poking over. So uh, given our outlook, don't see cutting rates this year. So there you go. Like Jerome Powell saying like, yeah, the market doesn't have to price in exactly what we think. We have a different forecast. Um, he, didn't, he didn't really walk things back today. So I'll get to a couple of uh, posts in a moment here, but let's look at the data open today and listen to what Jerome said because there's a lot between now and where we get to on Friday. So if we, uh, we talked about this yesterday too and on the weekend. So we got all this data out today. And uh, again, pause the slide if you want to watch it. Skipping forward to Thursday and Friday, we have the BOE and the ECB. I'll be watching that really close. Notably, what Christine Lagarde has to say. Jerome and his Q&A is what moved the market today. The headline number didn't. It was Jerome. So can Christine Lagarde do the same tomorrow? I'll be watching really close. That's going to be at 10 a.m. just after the market opens. After that... Uh, we've got non-farm payroll and unemployment rate coming in on Friday. So look at these two numbers here. And I want you to pay attention to them because this is what I believe, in addition to Christine Lagarde, economically could actually move the market. We're expecting unemployment rate to go up to 3.6. If it comes in at 3.5, again, Jerome just said he needs more slack in the labor market for a sustained path down to two. So if this does not come in in line or higher, I think... That could be a short-term catalyst. And we'll show you on the charts what that would mean, as I alluded to before. Non-farm payroll. Um, ADP came in today at roughly 100,000. This number has to come in at least at 185. It cannot come in with a B. Why? The market just priced in a perfect scenario here. So those two items uh, coming in 830 or pre-market on Friday. And then Christine Lagarde speaking at 1015 tomorrow are what I'm really paying attention to. In addition to Meta, which we just talked about, they reported today. Um, then we got Amazon, Apple, Google uh, uh, on Thursday. That's a $1 trillion company. That's a $2 trillion company. That's a $1 trillion company. Whoa. Yep. So that's about $4 trillion. That's a lot. Let's pay attention to them. They're the biggest blocks on the S&P 500. Um, and now if we look here to a couple of posts, summarize really well, and then we'll look at the uh, uh, the, the scenario going into tomorrow. So our 12-month bowl engulfing pattern is pretty much playing out where if we don't go down and we start going up, man, we go up big. That's exactly what happened. If we look here to um, this one here as well, um, let me actually just go to the post so I can read the uh, read the text. Is the third time the charm for a run to 410? Well, we just got through it. We got above 41178. I think we got to 413 today. All right, check. So bulls are making progress. That's right. Um, looking at one more here. Um, the last one I want to look at here is going to be the psychology of what led us to here. And everyone was fighting this the whole time. 278 on QQQ. Where are we now? Oh my goodness, Justin, we're at 303 and after hours. Yep, we're above 300 and uh, shoulda, woulda, coulda is what I think the bears are saying like Michael Burry by going and deleting his account. So now I want to leave you with uh, something specific here on SPY that I noticed. And if we look here to a 15 minute chart, um, let's actually remove extended hours and just, uh, just, just stick with me for a few minutes here and I will give you the, um, the synopsis. So if we look here to uh, exactly when the when when the FOMC came out, it was right here. That's at two o'clock when the headline numbers come out. We get a knee jerk reaction by going down, coming back up, and then we print a marginal lower low, right? A marginal lower low. Then what happens? Oh my goodness! Bull engulfing by the close of the candle. Jerome starts talking, and we just melt higher. So what's so interesting to me, and we can extrapolate this to higher time frames in a, in a minute, is that. Um, the range is established on the on the on the headline. We get our knee jerk, but then it comes back up, and then we get a failed breakdown here. We fail to hold the breakdown, and then when we actually price discover above the opening range here at about four oh six point one, that's when it really starts to pump. So watch the pattern we just uh, reviewed here. Re rewind it if you want to find it. Find watch it again. Watch these areas right here. I'm not going to bring back all my lines, and we're going to flip here to a weekly chart. So. We just told you what we were looking for. So now we have a high on uh, the weekly here. And let's actually just look at the daily. That'll be better here. So let's go to our daily chart. 
Um, and let's look here to the high we just established. So the high we just established is um, 41367. So think of this candle like that 50 minute one we just looked at. We've now come back down to close below 411. So we're right against resistance over and after hours. And if we come back down, that should be support. Why? Um, that's our cup and handle. We've been talking about this. There's our cup. There's our handle. We should hold the uptrend, this arrow right here. We should hold this. So if we come back down and we get that trap or even print a marginal lower low, if we reclaim it, man, you better not be on the wrong side of that trade. It's going to boom, get to the high here, and then breaking over the range that confirms it. That's the scenario from the 15-minute chart. Scenario two is that we go down and fade. Yeah, well, we've already talked about that, so I'm not going to go over it. That would ultimately form a head and shoulders pattern here with a rejection and the uptrend. Finally, we can also just open and push higher. So if we break above 413.67, that is where I don't think the bears are just wrong. We're probably going for a new bull market. Why? That's at 417. At 417, we birth a new bull market. Man, that's not that far off from where we are now. It's six, seven more points. Yep, six, seven more points. So why are these high, high, sorry, these uh, these high time frame charts so important? Well, one attempt, two attempt, third attempt. That's how the W gets formed. Really bullish area. Looking on the weekly for S&P, we've now actually back tested and pushed off the 50 monthly, uh, sorry, 50 weekly. We're over last week's high at uh, 408.16. We powered up over our relative highs and this looks like a bull break. So it looks like a W is forming here for a continuation. Again, is it, is it going to hold? It's only Wednesday. Let's see what happens into Friday. But now looking here to our monthly chart, this is where if we look at the high time frame chart, it's going to smooth the data out for us. So what do we note here now? Well, I know a bounce off the 50 monthly, a cup and handle with an uptrend that broke bullish. So we're now at an area we've not been at since uh, August of last year. It's been six months. We've not been at this area. We poked over it at 410.64 or our, our February low. Now let's see if we can hold it into what? Into the end of the month. Flipping to QQQ, which is also really important. Head and shoulders is now poking over last month's high. Check. Let's go to the lower time frame. QQQ, if we can hold this 50 weekly here, that's really bullish. As a reminder, we exit the kangaroo with two candle closes over a moving average. S&P is already there. QQQ is set for its first close over. We're not going to get confirmation until when? Next Friday. A lot of data to digest. If we're still above the 50 monthly next week, next Friday, I think that's where we're going to start squeezing even more. And looking at QQQ here on the, uh, the one-day chart, we've pop flagged exactly where I would expect us to. We got the white line and the red line. And as we look here, we pop, uh, flag, pop, flag, pop, flag, right off those areas. Then we pop flag off the off the 200 daily. Now we have potentially uh, all the way till February 21st to go sideways. If we come down, we'd have to lose the uptrend. Otherwise, we're looking for a move up here to about 310. So with that said, I thank you so much for watching. There'll be a weekend video queued up now if you want to watch uh, my deeper thoughts on how we got here and where I think we're going to go. If not, I wish you all the best of luck. And if you could smash that thumbs up, I would greatly appreciate it. Thanks so much.